Have you ever wondered why you can buy bananas in January? Or where all the sugar on the shelves comes from? Well, I can tell you this much, it's not all coming from the United States. As you shop for groceries, you'll see the results of American imperialism right in front of you. Today we're going to look into that history. Today's big event is the Spanish-American War of 1898, which is typically considered a big deal in the history of the Western Hemisphere. I hope you want to know why, uh, otherwise I'm out of a job. But, but don't worry, you'll find out today. Our big picture question is, how might a country's domestic interests lead to interference in foreign affairs? To help us along, we have a few guiding questions. What motivated United States imperialism in Latin America? Why was the Spanish-American War a turning point in history? How did imperialism in Latin America affect the United States' position in world affairs? In previous lessons, you learned about how some American businessmen had some pretty significant economic interests in foreign lands. Sanford Dole in Hawaii, for example. These sorts of business interests typically require government support. For example, major businesses would need favorable trade laws and sometimes even military support, especially when it came to venturing into a foreign territory. How does this connect with imperialism? Well, formal imperialism requires government support as well. Just a lot more of it. You already know that imperialism refers to the government practice of extending power over other lands and peoples. Power is typically extended through diplomacy or military force, but sometimes both. Between the belief in manifest destiny and the support of American businesses operating in foreign lands, you could say that the blueprint had already been made for American imperialism. In the early 1800s, Latin American revolutions tore apart most of the Spanish Empire. The lack of a dominant Spanish presence gave Americans more business opportunities in the area. But Spain wasn't going away quietly. They wanted their former colonies back. In response, the United States issued the Monroe Doctrine, which told Europe to stay out of Latin America and the Western Hemisphere as a whole. The Monroe Doctrine laid the groundwork for American imperialism in Latin America. But what motivated the move to become an imperial power? First, the United States was motivated by concerns over European influence in Latin America, which threatened American business interests. To America, it was a matter of national security. Second, United States imperialism in Latin America was motivated by the desire to compete with European powers on the global stage. Competition with Europe could expand America's commercial reach. But in the early 1800s, America was young and underdeveloped. It couldn't actually enforce the Monroe Doctrine because it had a weak navy and was focused on expanding west. By the end of the 19th century, the world was much different, and so was America. Try to picture yourself in 1890s America. Rapid industrialization, skyscrapers reaching toward the heavens, the Civil War is over and the West conquered, and look across the ocean, Europe has carved up Africa, exploiting the people and land to its advantage. So how do you think European imperialism in Africa motivated American imperialism in Latin America? Yep, the United States felt it needed its own region of the world to control in order to keep up with European imperialism. By the 1890s, America was ready to make its move. But in order for that to happen, the United States had to force Spain out of Latin America. Before we go further, let's have the first guiding question. What motivated United States imperialism in Latin America? By the late 1800s, America was on the move. American sugar industries bought up large tracts of land in Cuba, tying profitable returns to Cuban stability. But despite the Monroe Doctrine, Spain still held on to Cuba and Puerto Rico. 
Therefore, in the eyes of the United States, Spain posed a threat to national security. The U.S. just needed an excuse to act. In 1895, Cuban nationalists began to agitate for independence from Spain, putting American sugar profits at risk. Many people in the United States supported Cuban independence for a few reasons. First, many in the business world wanted to secure economic interests on the island by getting rid of Spain. Second, public support for Cuban nationalists increased after newspapers ran stories claiming the Spanish put Cuban civilians in concentration camps. These reports of brutal political oppression enraged average Americans who felt that the Spanish were violating the liberty of the Cuban people. Finally, American officials wanted an opportunity to show Europe it could compete politically and economically on an international level. Motivated by national security concerns, public outcry, and a chance to demonstrate America's ability to compete with Europe, the United States sent their newest battleship to Cuba. But on February 15, 1898, that ship, the USS Maine, exploded in Havana Harbor. Was Spain to blame? There was no time to wait around to find out the U.S. declared war on Spain. You'll investigate this later in the PDF. The Spanish-American War of 1898 had begun. It was fought between the United States and Spain in the Caribbean and also extended to Spanish colonies in the Pacific. The war ended before the end of 1898, with the U.S. prevailing. Cuba became independent, while Puerto Rico was taken as a U.S. territory. America also took control of the Philippines, a Spanish colony in Asia, giving the United States a global presence. So the Spanish-American War was a turning point in history because it made America an imperial power. It made America an imperial power because it demonstrated America's ability to secure its economic interests in other countries and compete with European powers on the world stage. So let's tackle the next guiding question. Why was the Spanish-American War a turning point in history? During the Spanish-American War, the United States Congress funded a massive naval buildup. After the war, a powerful navy extended American business interests into foreign markets by threatening military action against nations that resisted U.S. authority. So one effect of Latin American imperialism was the emergence of the U.S. as a global naval power. Another effect of imperialism in Latin America was the emergence of the United States as a global commercial power. How would an advanced navy and global commercial empire affect the United States position in world affairs? Well, that leads us to the final effect. Imperialism in Latin America positioned the United States as a global police force, continuously expanding its jurisdiction. Let's see an example of how this worked. In 1904, Theodore Roosevelt backed Panama's independence movement from Colombia. Why? Roosevelt wanted to use American support for the independence movement to coerce Panama to let the U.S. finance, build, and control a canal through the country, which is exactly what happened. The Panama Canal created a waterway through Central America, which meant that ships no longer had to go around South America to get from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean, dramatically cutting transportation time and costs. The canal would enable America to dominate commerce in the Western Hemisphere and the world. So how was Roosevelt able to strong-arm Panama into letting the U.S. control the canal? He spoke softly and carried a big stick. Big stick diplomacy was a foreign policy approach that relied on leveraging negotiations in favor of the U.S. based on the unspoken threat of American military force. Basically, do what we want, and if you don't, prepare to face the consequences. Big stick diplomacy, business interests, and the Panama Canal led to the Roosevelt Corollary. The Roosevelt Corollary was a foreign policy doctrine declaring the U.S. as enforcers of democracy and punishers of wrongdoers in Latin America. It extended the goals issued in the Monroe Doctrine and established the U.S. as a global police force. Over time, American presidents extended United States imperialism to include more and more regions of the world. Before we wrap things up, let's get to the last guiding question. How did imperialism in Latin America affect the United States' position in world affairs? United States imperialism was motivated by national security concerns and desire to expand the Navy.
The Spanish-American War gave the United States an opportunity to become an imperial world power. Further imperialism in Latin America made the United States a global naval and commercial power, and it led to the Roosevelt Corollary, setting the U.S. on the path to becoming a global police force. Wow! And continued economic ties with Latin America, an effect of this age of imperialism over a century ago, also means that you can get bananas in January, anywhere in America. You never know what you're going to find when you peel back the layers. And that's what I was saying about history. It's everywhere. Hey.